C has no Boolean type. So the question is, what kind of value does a logical operator evaluate into? Well, the answer is that in C, the int value 0 is used to denote false, and the int value 1 is used to denote true. So a logical operation that returns true actually returns the value int 1, and a logical operation that returns false actually returns the value of int 0. Any value equivalent to 0, whether it's an int, a char, or a float, or a double, then it is false. Any other numeric value is considered true. So here in the top example, the expression not 0 evaluates to 1, because 0 has the truth value of false, so we get back the result true in the form of the number 1. In the second line, not 1 evaluates to 0 because 1 has the truth value of true, so we get back the value 0 representing false. Not 3 also evaluates to 0 because 3 also has the truth value of true, so we get back false. Not negative 76.5 also returns 0 because again, any numeric value other than 0 ha has the truth value of true, and the operation not true returns the value false. 0. Another difference between pigeon and C is that in pigeon, the ver local variables of a function are local to the scope of the whole function. In C, however, a local variable is local to the most immediate set of curly braces in which it's declared, and that includes the curly braces of an if, an else, or a while. So here we have this function roger, which returns void, void being the reserved word you use for a function that doesn't return anything. And inside Roger we have this if block where we're declaring a variable called z. The problem here is where we are passing z as the argument to bar and ack, because those calls are not inside the scope where z is declared. So here the compiler will abort with an error message telling you that there's some undeclared variable z being used. It won't know that the variable you declared in the if scope is what you think you are using in those two places. It's just going to tell you there's just some unknown identifier. To make the compiler happy here, all we need to do is move the declaration and its initial assignment into the scope of the whole function. So here obviously the call to ack isn't a problem anymore, but also the calls to foo and bar are not problems either because the if block and the else block are both subscopes of the function. So any variables you declare in the outer function scope are visible to its subscopes. There are two basic reasons that C introduces these subscopes into functions. The first is that the subscopes act as effectively separate namespaces. So here, when I declare Z in the function scope, I can put in the if another declaration of some variable named Z, but it's actually going to be a totally separate variable named Z that's only seen within that scope. Now, of course, I probably could and should just avoid reusing the same names within a function, but it is sometimes nice, particularly in a very long function, to be able to reuse some common names. The other reason for subscopes is there's potentially a little bit of an efficiency gain. The variables for a subscope only need to exist on the stack while execution is in that subscope. So as soon as execution leaves the subscope, its local variables can be discarded. It's rare that this ever helps performance much at all, but it might particularly in a long function. Recall that in Pigeon, program execution started with the code that came after all of the function definitions. In C, you can't have any code outside of function definitions, so the way it works is that program execution starts by invoking a function with the special name main. So here is actually the hello world program written in C. It consists of just the function main with the return type int, and all it does is call the standard library function printf with the string hello world. That prints to the console the string hello world, and then we return the value zero. And I'll briefly mention that there actually is a small but necessary piece missing here, and that is you need to declare where the printf function comes from, because the standard library functions are not automatically available. You have to explicitly declare at the top of your code what other libraries you're bringing in, which is something we'll discuss how to do much later. You're also probably wondering why main returns int. Shouldn't we declare it void so it doesn't return anything at all? Well, actually, on some platforms, particularly Unix, when a process is executed, there's a mechanism in what's called the environment to make use of this value returned by the program. And so this int can be used to signal certain conditions. Um, normally zero would be returned to indicate success. And you would return other values to signal various sorts of error conditions. 
And if you do that, you would document what the values mean, because what they mean is totally up to each individual program. Zero for success is just a convention.